Metformin is for the people that can't put this down. What is up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Today's ASMR sip is some fitted Hawaiian nectar. Welcome back to Education. Today I got everyone's favorite diabetes drug to abuse in bodybuilding, metformin. I don't know much about metformin. I will be using Cheater GPT to help us, but this is one of those pedications where I just rather read the collective in the comment section to see what everyone thinks about it. There is no textbook that I'm gonna be using, so I'm gonna be using Cheater GPT. I wanted to go into the history of metformin. So according to Cheater GPT, metformin's history is from the plant that is called goat's root. This plant was used in traditional medicine for centuries to treat symptoms of diabetes, and it contains something called guanidine. I can't pronounce that, Russo can't pronounce. Huh? And it was found to be heavily toxic in high dosages. So this is one of the times, in my opinion, Big Pharma came through. They found a plant that actually moved the blood sugar. So your insulin growth hormone pendulum is what is regulating your blood glucose level most of the time, and you basically need to constantly be making sure your resting blood sugar in my opinion is around 80 okay it's different for everyone and everyone metabolizes differently but around 80 if it's resting above 80 you're pre-diabetic diabetic and you're having blood sugar issues your pancreas is being stressed and you're going to accumulate fat way more easy. So the first method of attack always would be to use something like berberine or blood glucose disposal agents. So insulin needs to come in there and transport everything around. We need to lower blood sugar for that to happen. We can't have chronically high blood sugar all day. That's when you're running into all sorts of issues and why your body composition is shit. A blood glucose disposal agent, which we can use a supplement plug here, Slim Pills from Enhanced, Code Russo would be the first method of attack. However, we know bodybuilders like the most high performance drugs and in the diabetes world where you have actual significant diabetics, right? That have fasting blood sugars way over a hundred. You need to use drugs to come in there and try to offset that to stop them from destroying everything in their body. Instead of them losing weight, we're just gonna put them on metformin and continue them along. <laughs> That's pretty much what Big Pharma came down to when they decided to research into this plant called goat's root. In the early 20th century, researchers began isolating the derivatives leading to development of a synthetic compound called biogonides. In the 1920s, we're in the 1920s they're forming metformin. So you can see Big Pharma was in the 1920s trying to get metformin to come to life. So metformin, phenoformin, and buformin were investigated for their glucose lowering levels. We get to the 1950s. Metformin was first approved for the use in Europe. It was gradually gained acceptance as a diabetes treatment. However, in the United States, concerns over bio due to formin's risk delayed metformin's approval. It was not until 1995 the FDA finally approved metformin for type 2 diabetes treatment following exceptional safety evaluations. So Big Pharma has to do it by the book and we now see that since it's been approved metformin has become one of the most widely if not abused oral prescribed medications around diabetes and it went on to even be touted around with cancer prevention. Some studies also suggest that it has been shown to have anti-aging properties. Russo can say if your blood glucose is good all day, you're going to age better. <laughs> I mean, today's metformin remains the cornerstone of diabetes management. That's not why we're here though. We're here to see how it got from a type 2 diabetes drug into the bodybuilding abuse performance enhancing world. It was gained a lot of attention for the fat loss and insulin management. For example, when you use growth hormone all day, and especially bodybuilder amounts, you're going to begin to develop insulin resistance. Insulin and growth hormone do not like to exist in the blood at the same time. And when you're natural, it's a pendulum that naturally swings back and forth in balance. You start adding in growth hormone secretagogues, peptides, anything in the growth hormone pathway, especially growth hormone 
itself, you're running into issues of, oh my goodness, I need to find a drug to counteract the damage of me exogenously adding in growth hormone. If you're adding in too much growth hormone, um, glucose disposal agents start not to work. That's when you're going to the heavy hitter, which is Big Pharma's metformin. The mechanism. It works by activating AMP-K, activated protein kinase, a regulator of cellular energy balance, improving insulin sensitivity to help shuttle glucose around the body. Glucose needs to be shuttled into the muscles. If the insulin's not working correctly, there's no movement of the free glucose roaming around as you're eating more glucose. This is why diabetes is such a nasty disease that can be prevented by just creating general education of the reason why it occurs in the masses. Metformin came in there to try to keep you leaner while you're abusing growth hormone and other growth hormone pathway peptide secretagogue. You're trying to regulate that blood sugar so insulin is still working correctly while you're abusing growth hormone. And when you get to the higher dosage levels of growth hormone, you're using metformin or you're actually just exogenously adding insulin. So you start at blood glucose disposal agents like slim pills and other supplements. As it gets worse, now you're jumping to metformin. If that's not working, then you jump into actually just injecting insulin. And this is the abuse of bodybuilding that has been going on before you know I was even here. Insulin and growth hormone have always been used. If you're using tons and tons and tons of growth hormone, you should probably take the load off your pancreas eventually if you want your pancreas to last and you should just start injecting insulin. Or if you're in the middle and your pancreas is still working decently, you can use metformin to aid it. It was also looked into anti-aging and longevity purposes like we mentioned, and it was also looked into fat oxidation around the regulation of blood glucose. Let's go into the risk. Despite the benefits, metformin abuse carries significant risks. One major concern is the impact on muscle growth. Since metformin activates MK, that's opposing the mTOR pathway. The mTOR pathway is all about muscle building. So prolonged use could actually hinder muscle gains. So that's where it's like, unless you're abusing massive amounts of shit to overpower the metformin, if you're just adding in metformin when you should be using a blood glucose disposal agent, you're actually hindering your cycle. Metformin is a heavy hitter. Metformin should be used if you're abusing tons and tons and tons of growth hormone. If you're just adding in metformin when you should be using a blood glucose disposal agent, you could nitpick at that including common side effects known as obviously muscle atrophy, GI issues, nausea, diarrhea, bloating, digestion issues, nutrient absorption issues. You're gonna have nutrient absorption issues as you go higher and higher in the metformin. So it's fixing one issue, it's causing another issue. The management of diabetes could just be putting down the fork, Andrew. But here I am talking about the yo-yo effect of combining all this shit to combat diabetes. Another issue which Cheater GPT mentions is lactic adesis, a rare life-threatening condition that can occur if metformin accumulates in the body, particularly in those with impaired kidney function. Definitely not bodybuilders, right? Bodybuilders who push their bodies to extreme lifting with intense training. Anytime you train intensely, you break down a shit ton of muscle. What's filtering that? The kidneys. So if you train hard like me, you're causing kidney stress all the time. You're adding in drugs that are impacting the kidneys. Now you're adding in metformin. This is a recipe for a toxic body that should be monitored by preferably a coach going through your blood work all the time. What I'm trying to get at with metformin is Andrew, they just think it's like Slim Pills Plus. No, you're dealing with an actual diabetic drug that's impacting all this shit. It shouldn't be just used as a pot metformin and forget. Metformin is a serious drug you're adding into the whole combination of the drug stew you're using for bodybuilding. Now, when you're interfering with glucose metabolism, you could impact performance in general. I would feel like you would be flatter on a bunch of metformin. You really, really should need it if it actually is needed with the blood glucose score being so out of whack. Don't use metformin if you don't need it. We'll ask Cheater GPT, well, is it worth the risk? Well, metformin's ability to improve insulin sensitivity may seem attractive to bodybuilders looking for an edge. In my opinion, if you're using tons of growth hormone, 
metformin makes sense. If you're using tons of growth hormone, why don't you just exogenously add insulin at that point? Metformin is like that weird in the middle compound that people think it's really safe. It's really not. You should use blood glucose disposal agents in my mind. Or if you're going all the way up there with the big boy bodybuilding dosages that's needed for open pro bodybuilding, you might as well use insulin. That's my two cents. I don't see the need to mess with metformin unless you're actually diabetic. To me, when I'm reading through this and when I hear people in my DM box, it seems like it's decreasing performance. That's just me. The suppression of muscle growth pathway, mTOR. Digestive issues, risk of metabolic disruption, makes it questionable as an actual performance enhancer and makes it seem more to Russo with his caveman brain that it should just be used as a diabetic drug but here I am putting it in education because it's widely used. As far as the dosages I see out, I'll just go to Cheater GPT to say, Cheater GPT said it, not me, is 200 to 500 mega day is what Cheater GPT is considering a moderate low dose. And then 1500 is the high end moderate dose with high dose being 2000 plus a day. You would definitely want to time it with high carb meals and on rest days, and you would definitely not want to take it around workouts to impact glucose while you're working out. Glucose is what gives you the pump and what makes your muscles feel full. If you're not diabetic, you're just making yourself flatter and weaker. That's what Cheater GPT is trying to get through your head is you should just probably use a blood glucose disposal agent, which there's tons of those supplements on the market. Everyone wants to use the cool drug, Andrew, metformin. Metformin, that's all I hear. It's anti-aging, metformin. You're causing so many issues. Now, if you're a type two diabetic and you have issues and you're battling through type two diabetes, that's why it was made. If you're a bodybuilder abusing tons of growth hormone by accepting you're doing that, then why don't you just accept that you should probably learn how to manage using SLIN with it. Although SLIN can make you go hypo and pass out, it's an easy math equation that I'm sure after the caveman bodybuilder gets through it a couple of times, you know how many carbs to carry around. That's where I see metformin slotted. I don't see it with the potential risk on Cheater GPT right here, the bullet points, reduce muscle growth. How's that a PED for me? GI issues, you're messing with your GI, your GI is the communication between your brain and your gut. You're messing with that with metformin. Why? I don't understand. Use a blood glucose disposal agent, consume less carbohydrates, or if you're up there as the big boys in the open IFBB Pro, then you probably need insulin anyways. You probably, if your pancreas is destroyed from abusing for that long, just use insulin. I don't really understand why I'm reading risk of lactic acidosis. I'm not a doctor, though rare. Excessive metformin use, especially in dehydrated or overtrained individuals, could increase the risk of dangerous conditions. Decrease workout performance. This doesn't sound like a PED to me. This doesn't sound like a good way to manage blood glucose to me. This sounds like a great treatment for type two diabetics that don't work out, and Andrew knows they don't put down the fork. That that would be the way to get out of type two diabetes, Andrew, is you take that fork and you place it down. I know it's tough, it's really that simple, but it becomes a juggling act. I don't see metformin really slotting in. However, it sells. I'm sure I could plug you up with metformin if you search Ryan Russo Linktree and support my content. But at the end of the day, I'm not gonna sit here and be like, yeah, yeah, Zach, metformin, it's like, oh man, it's this longevity compound, it's anti-aging, I keep my blood glucose perfect all day. No, you're interacting with your GI tract, you're making yourself flatter and crappier when you train, you probably don't even manage your blood sugar level like OCD anyways. When you train, your blood glucose level changes. You should be checking your blood glucose all the time to see, okay, what's it like when I wake up? What's it like before I eat my meals? Okay, now the key important point, what is it at after I do my hard training session? Okay, after I collected all these data points, do I actually need metformin? Probably not. You probably need a blood glucose disposal agent, or if you're on tons of growth hormone as a pro open, you should probably use insulin instead and get the full benefits of exogenously fucking with insulin and exogenously fucking with growth hormone. Metformin is in the middle. Metformin, I do not really understand how it got into bodybuilding so much. I understand it 
as the way Big Pharma intended it for. But to me, personally, Russo's two cents, you either use blood glucose disposal agents, which there's a ton of those supplements on the market, or you accept that you're gonna fry your pancreas using all this growth hormone over the years, and you just start using insulin. What I see these doctors and everyone market this as this miracle compound, Zach, it's an anti-aging compound. Sure, we're fucking up your GI tract, it's an anti-aging compound. I can say that it's not a PD, right? I'm gonna put it in education because it comes up all the time in bodybuilding, but you don't see people getting much out of it as far as a performance enhancer drug, a performance enhancing drug, which is the education on. I don't see it. That's my brand over here. I do see it as the drug it was intended for, but at the end of the day, if you are abusing blood glucose disposal agent supplements for long periods of time, and it's still not combating, then maybe you should just use Slin if you're a performance enhancing drug user for performance. When I see metformin, it seems to decrease performance. At the end of the day, metformin is this band-aid drug in my mind for type two diabetics who, they just, they gotta put this down, they, 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 it's stuck to them. Okay, if they put the fork down, they'd be good. They don't, they don't. In that case, they're not gonna be abusing insulin as a performance enhancer. So we're just stopping their pancreas from dying. Your pancreas has beta cells in it that die over time. It takes a long time to cook your pancreas, but when your fasting blood glucose is chronically high all day, your pancreas is being fucked and you should probably put down the fork or get on metformin. When I see it in a performance enhancing drug context, I'm like, you should be eating correctly enough, right? Enough, Russo's the bloat lord, right? We, we get this, like, you should be eating correctly enough where a blood glucose disposal agent can regulate your blood sugar. Or if you're on tons of growth hormone, you're like, I'm on tons of growth hormone, I'm fucking up my pancreas anyways. I just wanna take the load off my pancreas and I'm just gonna inject insulin and save my pancreas that way. Metformin is for the people that can't put this down for whatever reason, dopaminergic issues, it's an actual thing. It's hard to break a food addiction, trust me, I know. You would need to literally just accept that, hey, I have to consume less glucose. If not, if they just wanna eat themselves into whatever they're eating themselves into, and they're going down that road, that's where metformin comes in there. I don't really see metformin being this slotted in perfect drug that is going to be better than just using insulin like every old school bodybuilder. You know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. If I left anything out, please comment it down below. I'm always looking to read the comments and get corrections on my content, as well as the expansion of the information in this education. Obviously, Russo's not a fan of metformin. I will see you guys in my next video.